today we've got a realistic TRC1005 and portable in for repair. These stem from 1983. And this is a customer who is a private individual. Normally we only do these for the trade. So this is Robbie's set. What we're going to do is start with the VCO. And I'll just run through that with you. The first thing we need to do is set the radio to channel 20, which I've done, but at the moment the liquid crystal display I've removed from above the VCO can. I've taken the lid off the VCO can. With the test meter set to 20 volt range, we're looking for test point 3, and test point 3 is that there. You've got a bit of a loop on a resistor. And what we're looking for is for 3 volts at test point 3. Now one of the faults on this radio is it does what we call frequency hopping. The customer says that sometimes it isn't on frequency and it will select something totally different. So we're going to look for two things. We're going to look for dry joints and we're going to check that this VCO is set up correctly. Right at this moment I'm getting 3.5 volts and it should indeed be 3. So to adjust this make sure we're in the right mode, we're on receive, we're on channel 20 and we now need to be adjusting L2 for 3 volts and L2 is the one just there so at the moment we've got 3.5 supposed to be a non-metallic trimming tool so we're looking at adjusting and wait for the meter to settle 2.94 3.09 just see if we can get it that bit finer than that 3.03 I'll just put the meter there ok so that's done that now staying on channel 20 and going now into transmit still with the prod on the test point and again we should have 3 volts. We've got 2.16 volts. So this time we're going to adjust TC1. And TC1 is a trimmer capacity there. So with the three finger shuffle I will now set the radio to transmit. And get 3 volts on that meter Two point eight nine, two point nine three, two point nine five, two point nine nine. That's a three. Again, I put that into shot. That's just jumped up to three point two. So, again, we've got that now set as the manual says it's 3.03 .03. we've got 3.05 on receive we've got 3.03 .03 on transmit then we need to check and I'll do this off camera we need to check that the VCO is going to be somewhere between 1.7 and 4.5 volts both on transmit and receive throughout the 40 channels so I'll just do that and I'll come back to you. Now what I've had to do here, because it didn't matter how we try and set the VCO up, I was unable to select channel 40. What I've had to do is to remove this lower screening plate, which is an absolute pain, and remove the antenna, get to the other side of the printed circuit board, and I've just gone through the phase like loop I see for dry joints. And I've checked that the wiring's in place from the channel selector switch, which is there. And there are two through board links which can play up. And I've checked both of those and resoldered them very carefully. And what I'm now going to do is use a chemical cleaner and just clean up the flux around there so that it's better than how it came out of the factory.
Okay, so we've done that. We've put the screen can back on there. And then back to that side. I've gone through the tests again. I've reset the VCO so that it's 3 volts on transmit and receive at the test point there, test point 3. And to recap, we adjust on receive on channel 20 for uh, 3 volts with L2. And then we go into transmit and looking for 3 volts again on channel 20 with the trimmer capacitor 1 there, which is what we've got right now. And I'll just go and recheck that. 3.1. In fact, I'll just show you. 3.12 going to transmit. 3.05. Then on channel 40, we don't need to exceed 4 to 4.5 4 volts, and on channel 1, we don't need to be less than 1.7 to 2.2 volts, both on transmit and receive. And having gone through that for dry joints using a chemical cleaner and so on, we now have all 40 channels working. As I said, it wasn't working on channel 40. Right, so having done that, I think we can put the top can on the VCO and join me on working on, uh, with the transmitter. There was one point I should have mentioned. The radio is brought onto frequency with the other trimmer capacitor there, which is um, trimmer capacitor number 5. So I will just do that uh, while we're on channel 20. Uh, it's very slightly low, it's 27. 79110, that's just brought it up to 79125, so it's spot on. Okay, we've got the full service manual in front of me here, and what we need to be doing now is adjusting T6, 7, L5, L8, and L9 for maximum power. So, this is the next procedure we're on channel 20, obviously, we're in high power mode. And uh, just to recap, I'll just go to the layout page. Um, L, uh, T6, T7, um, L5 is the uh, is that one. So it's six, seven, L5, L8, and L9. So we're going to do that right away. So. Switch it back on. He's doing a full three watts, so I'm going to have to go to the other setting on this radio. The radio is doing three watts in power. Uh, it's a three and a half watt radio. I don't ever think these are four because they're three and a half. So we'll just make sure that's maximum. That's brought it up. T7. Yep, I'll just go through those again. Put this power supply set at 12.4 volts. Don't make the mistake of doing these at 13.8, or you'll end up burning out the output stage and not designed to run at 13.8. If you use them in a car, they either need to be through a voltage dropper for 12 volts or you use it with the engine off, not the full charging voltage with 13.8. So we'll now move on to that was sealed. That's brought it up to 3.1. 3 3.2. Just go through those meticulously. Now we've got three point two. Now I'll go back to the manual and we'll see what if, if that is acceptable for three point two. Uh, it does say in the manual, yes, 3 watts is the minimum acceptable, so 3.2 is fine. I say we're running to 12.4 volts, 
and of course it's being keyed up so when we've keyed up from cold it will exceed that so I'm going to just set the deviation uh, and on low power it's, although it's supposed to be point um, 4 of a watt it isn't adjustable on these radios so just see what it's doing it's actually doing point 0.3 of a watt and the manufacturer's manual says it needs to be between 0 0.1 and 0 0.4 well, let's say ideally it would be 0 0.4, but it's 0 0.3. That is fine. Now, the deviation is variable resistor 1 on these radios. And really, I need an external mic to do this, but we've got none in stock at the moment. I think they arrive tomorrow, but that doesn't help us today. That's because we've got another customer waiting for a couple of extension microphones to use with these. So, um, I'm just looking for VR1. Let's pause the video while we do that. Wallow, wallow. Wallow. Okay, we've got the oscillator on. Let's put that in the vicinity of the microphone. I'm going to transmit. And VR1 is the one just there. So it's just under where the LCD will be going back. That's not very sensitive. It's doing 0 0.7. Uh, kilohertz deviation. I'll have to do the whistle test. <laughs> yes, that's that's doing 2.5 and voila, that's doing 2.5. So we're going to leave that on full. I've been doing these radios obviously for 30 years, these uh, TRC 1001s and 1005s like this and um, maximum deviation on these is usually about um, acceptable without modifying the radio. Now what do I need? What do we need next? Oh yes, monitor receiver, make sure it sounds okay. 
So it goes to transmit with the monitor receiver on and testing one, two, one, two, one, two. And what we'll now do is we'll plug in an external mic. I've managed to find a factory original external mic for these. So we'll just plug that in to the top socket. And we'll just test that with that. Testing one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I've got nothing. It's probably our mic. One, two, one, two. Okay, having repaired the test mic, you wouldn't believe it. You couldn't make it up, could you? It now works perfect. There was a wire off on the insert. Testing one, two, one, two, testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. It's nice and crisp. Right, so I set up the transmitter. Um, quick check, what's it doing now? Um, it's doing 3.2 watts. And a uh, quick recheck of the deviation, which is the whistle test. <whistles> wow, that's fine. Right, if you'd like to join me on the receive side, we'll see why this radio is as deaf as a post.